that every film has to find its own unique way of pushing the boundaries in the language, either the visual language, the emotional language, the psychological language of cinema and, uh, and, and, and of films and of art in that way. I'm in love. Aren't you a bit young to be in love? No. Oh, oh, okay. It feels great to be part of the holiday tradition of love. Actually, you know, it's um, it's it's every every year from about as as we're coming into December, so uh, maybe by about mid December, you know, till just after Valentine's Day is is now kind of love actually season. Did you do this? Uh, no. I think I just always feel like that wedding and that uh, that the sort of opening sequence, that sort of opening number in the church, you know, is just every time I see it and every time I kind of revisit that time, you know, it's just such a it was such an incredible, emotional, fun and happy experience. So it's always been fun and I'm always sort of thrilled and excited that people love the movie so much. Please, God, tell me I have not inspired something burgundy. But they're comfy. Sex shouldn't be comfy! Thank God, I thought it was just me. Well, I think Lola, the character that I played in, in Kinky Boots, who um, was just one of the funnest and most interesting and most dynamic people that I've ever played. I think that whole story and the, and the whole film was kind of ahead of its time in many ways. Um, and it had an impact at that time, in that moment, but also there was a kind of deep and, and emotional resonance to that character. And uh, in a way, it was talking about kind of pretty serious issues in a really fun way. Now you know what's at stake. Alfonso Cuaron and Emmanuel Lubetsky, uh, also known as Chivo, who was the cinematographer on that film, were incredible to watch together. And what they were trying to achieve and what they were pushing for cinematically on Children of Men had never been attempted before and was so vast, so huge, you know, so ambitious. It's why he's such an extraordinary, um, talented, innovative, imaginative filmmaker. He was wonderful to, to watch and, uh, and to be on the set of. What's the flight? There were moments in Children and Men that I felt that uh, what they'd been able to achieve in a matter of, of days, you know, with that huge battle sequence that happens at the end of the film, um, which is kind of has hidden edit points, but is really feels like it's one continuous moment through all of these different scenarios and landscapes with all of this action going on. Um, and being in the middle of that and seeing that happen and seeing how efficient some of that kind of working condition was and how much Alfonso was able to achieve in a day with Emmanuel Lubetsky, it was a real lesson in how you can effectively and efficiently push the limits of, of cinema. I will survive! I will not fall into despair! I will keep myself hardy till freedom is opportune! If I'm looking at a project, the first thing I think about is the best way to approach the project in terms of research. So it's like sort of meta-thinking, thinking about how you're going to start thinking about it in a way. It might be about an accent or a voice and something else, it might be the historical research. With 12 Years a Slave, it was, it was everything. What I love about working with Stephen Queen and, uh, and something that I, that I hoped I could sort of t take with me into work as a director was that um, Stephen McQueen is somebody who is really aware uh, that every single person, every single actor, every single head of department sort of needs a unique way of being engaged with, you know, that, um, that he's very sensitive to what every individual needs in order to kind of continue to enhance and push the, the, the capacity to understand and to develop um, their own work within the context of making the film, all within the same sort of language. So everybody's making the same film in the end, but is, you know, he really enhances everybody's unique capacity. And that, I think, is a real skill. There's different ways of understanding, the different kind of poetry of filmmaking. He's somebody who really gets that. With the electricity, we can plant in the dry season. And to a was the Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is the story of William Kamkwamba from his own true life experience uh, of what happened to him in 2001 to 2002 when he was 13 years old in Malawi. I read the book in 2009 and 
um, completely fell in love with this, this story. The first day of shooting is this kind of major moment, especially the first day, I'm sure, I imagine, the first day of shooting any film that you're directing, but the first day of shooting your first film, I think, is always going to be pretty special, uh, pretty unique. We'd done an incredible amount of preparation, and I had sat with the film for the best part of eight, nine years, and so I really was inside that material. So um, it, was, it was great to wake up that first morning and feel that sense of, um, you know, that sort of morning of the Olympic finals and feel a sense of calm instead of panic. I think that at the end of a process like this, you know, that I had gone through, um, you know, years of writing the script, shooting the film, and then into coming back to London with the footage, you know, and this uh, editing process. Towards the end of this long process, what I was really surprised by was that idea that I never felt that it was kind of, it was never finished, you know. I think somebody once said, you don't really finish a film, they just take it away from you. And, uh, and I think that that's, that's true. There's always, there's always more that you, could, um, that you could give to it, even after 10 years. <laughs>